in the world of microservices, there are services calling other services in order to give the user the information the user is requesting. Now, if a service, say service A, depends on service B, and if service B is down or is having high latency or response time, then it will cause service A to fail. The failure may cascade down to other pieces of the application and can potentially bring down the entire application. The user will see error pages which tarnishes the image of our website. In a high volume website, requests would continue to plummet through and due to the service being down or having high latency will cause saturation of resources and high queue size or exhaustion of thread pools. Spring Cloud Hystrix provides a circuit breaker pattern to provide fault tolerance and latency tolerance in such situations. Among other things, it allows us to define a fallback method when a dependent service call fails, thus providing time for the dependent service to recover and respond, and also providing graceful degradation of service worsen throwing errors. In this video, we will first review the Spring Cloud Eureka server, service, and client apps we had built earlier in my videos, Spring Cloud Service Discovery, Netflix Eureka Server, Spring Cloud Service Discovery, Netflix Eureka Service, and Spring Cloud Service Discovery, Netflix Eureka Client. Then we will see how to implement circuit breaker functionality with Hystrix. Our client is calling a dependent service. We will make the dependent service fail. We will see the response without a circuit breaker first, and then the response when we implement a circuit breaker and have a fallback method. From Wikipedia, a circuit breaker is an automatically operated electrical switch designed to protect an electrical circuit from damage caused by excess current from an overload or short circuit. Its basic function is to interrupt current flow after a fault is detected. So in a similar fashion, our fallback method diverts the execution when the dependent services are down or unavailable. Alright, here are the three Spring Boot projects I had built earlier in my videos. Spring Cloud Service Discovery Netflix Eureka Server, Spring Cloud Service Discovery Netflix Eureka Service, and Spring Cloud Service Discovery Netflix Eureka Client. Please watch them to get up to speed. Let's start the Eureka Server first. Okay, it starts up on port 8761. Let's go to the browser and type HTTP localhost 8761. The Eureka Server provides a nice dashboard. Right now, there is no service registered. Next, let's open the application.properties file for the Eureka service, where we see the application name Eureka service with which it will register with the Eureka server, the Eureka server address. Let's start the service. Now, let's go back to the browser and refresh, and we see our Eureka service registered here with the status as up. We can also invoke the service directly on its port, so HTTP localhost 8081 and we see the message hello from service 1. Finally, here is the client application. Let's open its application.properties file. Our client application contacts the Eureka server to find out the addresses of running services. Let's open the client controller and here we see that it is using Eureka client to get the service addresses from the Eureka server passing in the service name. Then it invokes the service and returns the result. So this is a service our client is dependent on and if it fails or is slow then it can cause problems. First let us see the normal behavior. Let's start our client application. It is up on port 8082. Go to the browser and type HTTP localhost 8082 and we see that it successfully executed the underlying service as the underlying service is up and returns the response. Now what if this service is down? Let's stop the Eureka service. Go back to the browser and invoke the client again. And now we see that there is a failure and we see the error on our screen. Certainly we do not want our end customers to see this. We would rather have them see a graceful degradation or that we should have a fallback method to pursue our fallback approach while the dependent service recovers. Let's see how to do it with Hystrix. First, let's stop the client. Now, open the pom.xml file for the client and add the dependency for Spring Cloud Starter Hystrix. Next, let's go to our main class for the app 
and add the enable hysterics annotation which does most of the auto configuration magic for us. Let's import it. Next, let's go back to our controller. We put the hysterics command over the method call which can fail. So here the controller method. We specify the fallback method name as fallback greeting. Let's import it. Next, let's define this method. It should have the same signature in terms of the input parameters and the return type. Inside the method, let's put a system.out message response from fallback method. Let us return hello from fallback method as our original method also returns a string. So now in case of a failure, the circuit breaker will interrupt and call this method instead. Let's start the Eureka service and the Eureka client. Let us go back to the browser. First, let's call the client at localhost 8082. Since the underlying service is up, it will be called as normal and we see the response hello from service 1. Now let's go and stop the service. When we call the service directly, now it throws an unable to connect error. Let us call our client now and we see that Hystrix detects the underlying service to be down. The circuit breaker interrupts and passes control to the fallback method and we see the fallback method being executed and return the response, hello from fallback method. Back in the project, we see in the console the fallback system out message indicating that it was executed. In this video, we saw how without Hystrix, when an underlying service fails, it causes errors to be thrown to the client. Then we added Hystrix and saw how the circuit breaker passes control to the fallback method in case of a failure, letting it handle the failure. Thanks for watching.